Hey there fellow traders, welcome back to Insider Financial. In this video we will discuss the stocks on our radar. First, to get our market moving reports on top small caps, click that link in the description or go to insiderfinancial.com and sign up with your email. After you sign up with your email, you can then sign up with your mobile number. Text is the fastest way to get all of our reports and it works for all numbers worldwide. Simply enter your country code first followed by your number. For US and Canada, be one plus area code and number. Never begin the format with zero, it will not work. And after you sign up, you'll get a welcome email which includes a free copy of our our ebook, The Insider Financial Guide to Penny Stocks. Our ebook, our text messaging service, and email are all free services from Insider Financial. We don't run any Telegram groups, Discords, or paid subscription services whatsoever. Well, guys, uh, first from our last video, we covered a number of winners last week for subscribers. As I do each and every Sunday, we run down what happened in the previous week and I outline what's on the on the agenda for the coming week. First up, I talked about Oracle had a great earnings report. Earnings, uh, AI revenues are growing. Uh, it was a great play with uh, in terms of calls. Uh, they rallied all the way from uh, after the earnings report hit, you know, it, it Close. It's consolidated around 156, uh, but on Friday uh, hit 174. So a lot of money was made in uh, Oracle call options last week. Uh, Wolf uh, Petco also had a delivered on earnings. Uh, the stock rallied from three dollars to five dollars. Nice move there. Uh, GME disappointed. The stock really needs a catalyst. Uh, roaring kitty memes are not going to cut it. Uh, Ryan Cohen needs to deliver and show. Revenue. Revenue growth and profits. SMMT. Uh, this was the biggest runner last week, and like I said, I, I covered it in Monday night's video. Uh, up 160% for the week. Uh, great uh, drug results. Uh, company uh, uh, said that uh, its key uh, uh, drug uh, had better results than Merck's key Truda in terms of uh, cancer treatment. Uh, the company then was also able to raise a bunch of money at $27 a share uh, in a private placement, so it's well-funded. Uh, shorts got in big position in this. 17% uh, of the float is short. So, you know, as I go into uh, covering these names, you know, you get a catalyst uh, plus a uh, large percent of this float is short. Uh, you're going to get a move like we saw in SMMT. So again, this is what we're looking for here at Insider Financial. And congrats to all who watched and banked last week. In terms of the overall market, uh, the S&P 500 on Friday surged 4.02% for the week to end at 56.26, posting gains in all five sessions. The bulls charged back on to Wall Street this week, uh, helping the benchmark index rebound from its worst week of the year to post its best week of the year. It was actually the S&P's best week since the end of October 2023. The last time the uh, S&P 500 fell at least 4% in one week and then rallied more than 4% the next was in June 2022. Last week's sell-off was driven by concerns over economic growth after a slew of soft data, especially on the labor market. That, coupled with historical September weakness, led to investors pulling out of growth sectors such as technology and flocking to the safety of assets such as bonds. And TLT, this is the uh, iShares uh, 20 plus year uh, treasury bond ETF. As you can see, this one has been uh, rallying. I mean, again, it's an ETF, so not huge gains, but again, uh, nice percentage moves in terms of what's going on uh, in terms of asset allocation for the bond market. Uh, the narrative reversed uh, this week after market participants received inflation data that strongly reinforced expectations of a Fed interest rate cut uh, coming Wednesday. The only question now is how much will be the size of the cut. Uh, the CPI report for August released on Wednesday showed the headline number cooling on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, the headline uh, producer price index on Thursday also decelerated on a year-over-year -year basis. The core CPI and PPI, PPI came in a tad higher than anticipated. Uh, this month's uh, last month's employment report offered a little bit of something for both doves and hawks, speculating speculate on the outcome of next week's Fed meeting. An acceleration in hiring in August, coupled with downward revisions to prior data, left the door open to either a 25 basis point or 50 basis point 
Home cut uh, on Wednesday. Inflation data out this week lent a bit more clarity. The core CPI printed at 0.3% month over month in August. This was slightly higher than forecast uh, and marked the fastest paced price increase in four months. Although August inflationary burst was more likely a volatile pop than a trend shift, the sticky nature of price growth may prompt FOMC members to exercise more caution on the way down. Uh, for this week, uh, not much data on Monday. Uh, Tuesday, uh, IPO lockup uh, expires on uh, Reddit, RDDT. Uh, Salesforce, CRM, uh, will hold its Dreamforce 2024 event. The high-profile event will include talks from Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff, AMD CEO Dr. Lisa Su, FedEx CEO Raj Subramanian, and uh, Camping World CEO Marcus Limonis. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wong will take part in a session on the future of AI. Uh, why am I mentioning this, guys? Uh, well, last week, markets sold off after CPI core came in a little bit hotter than expected, but NVIDIA CEO John Jensen Wong was speaking that day, and he lighted a fuse in NVIDIA stock that brought the, mar the entire market down. So S&P, uh, SPY, uh, if you were watching it, uh, sold off on uh, Wednesday. Uh, this is the low here at 10.30 a.m. Uh, stock hit a low of uh, 539.96. What coincided with the double, multiple bottom here uh, from the previous week, uh, but Nvidia was uh, catching a bit. Uh, it never went negative on that day, uh, as you can see here, and then that just really lighted, brought the entire market back. So again, these are very important things to pay attention to. What's going on? Who's speaking? Who's doing what? You just put it on your calendar. You watch it. Watch this video. These are why I'm giving you these updates. Uh, then also at um, 8.30 a.m. Uh, on uh, Tuesday, we get August retail sales. And then uh, Electronic Arts on uh, Tuesday will hold its first investor day since 2016. Analysts think there is the potential that management will discuss the game pipeline and financial targets. Morgan Stanley has circled the event as a significant opportunity to reset investor expectations on EA's priorities and growth drivers. Wednesday, we have the FOMC statement at 2 p.m. and Jay Powell's press conference at 2.30. I think we get a 25 basis point cut. 50 basis point cut would spook the market, in my opinion. In other words, people will be saying, what does the Fed know that we don't know? Are things worse than they appear? So that's why I think we get a 25 basis point cut. Thursday at 10 a.m., the August home sales report will be released. And then at 5.30 p.m. after market closed, uh, FedEx will hold its earnings call, with key being the expectations for the holiday season and implications uh, of the end of the U.S. Postal Service contract. Options trading implies a 7% swing in share price after the report is released. FedEx soared more than 15% after its last earnings report. On Friday, uh, the stock market could see extra volatility with triple witching day featuring the simultaneous expiration of stock options, stock index futures, and stock index options contracts. Moving on, as I said, guys, uh, the best screen for me has been my short squeeze list, uh, Catalyst plus short position, over 10% uh, of the float, and it's a perfect rep recipe for a move. I uh, will be updating subscribers this week with updates from this screen, so make sure you sign up, and again, it's completely free. Lastly, a lot of chatter uh, on stock twits this weekend about MCVT. Uh, float is just 1.8 million shares, uh, according to Finviz. Uh, closed up almost 10% higher on Friday and up another 5% after hours. Uh, keep your eye on this play for Monday. A lot of smart money that we follow here on uh, Stock Twits has been talking about it. Uh, guys like uh, Stocks Rockman, so he's all over this one. Uh, highly recommend uh, <clears throat> giving him a follow uh, and checking out MCVT. At Insider Financial, uh, we put stocks on your radar with potential outsized moves. As I repeatedly stated, there are always opportunities in the markets daily. The important thing is identifying which stocks to invest in to grab that money. The key is trading green, not red, where you're looking for those momentum plays with catalysts. It's all about finding momentum before it happens and riding that wave. That's what we're doing here at Insider Financial. And to get our small cap reports, we cover low float, short squeezes, recent IPOs, biotech FDA plays, AI stocks, EV 
EV stocks, lithium stocks, and insider buying. Click that link in the description or go to insiderfinancial.com and sign up with your email and mobile number. There is no spam. Your info is never shared. You can unsubscribe anytime. You can even sign up just to see the level of research we do here at Insider Financial and unsubscribe. And remember, Insider Financial and I are not investment advisors. This video does not provide investment advice. Always do your research, make your own investment decisions, or consult with your nearest financial advisor. This video is not a solicitation or recommendation by Seller Hold Securities. This video is our opinion. It is meant for informational and educational purposes only and does not provide investment advice. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. Thanks for joining us today on Insider Financial. Hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to never miss the latest insights and strategies. Until next time, happy trading. Bye-bye.